What's going on there folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster here on the uh, live stream with an update video on this uh, Monday evening, January 31st, 2022. So last day of the month. We've got February tomorrow. It is about 6 11 p.m. California time here along the west coast and a uh, 4.7 earthquake is the latest quake in the globe here at the very southern end of the Peru Chile Trench. We've been watching a swarm of movement kick up here throughout the day today. Let's go ahead and check out the activity kicking up here around the globe on the latest USGS map here. Uh, you can see the activity down there in the South America region in the red circle showing that swarm of activity. Had a couple here within the last hour, 4.6 and a 4.7. This is relatively shallow earthquake activity, uh, but we have been seeing some deeper movement here along the Peru Chile Trench up north here over the last couple days. Uh, this here is a little area where we've seen, uh, of course, I shouldn't say little because this is where we see the uh, the largest earthquake ever recorded back in 1964. The uh, Chilean earthquake is a pretty big one. So a little little bit of uh, our earthquake happening around the Chile area with that swarming and some deeper movement up north. Uh, also some deeper earthquake activity in the uh, northern part here around the Peru area. Uh, Peru Chile Trench stretches a considerable distance here up and up and down the South American continent here. A uh, major player in producing not only large earthquakes but uh, oh man subsequent tsunamis uh, and a very high accumulated uh, stress area when it comes to the uh, plate dynamics here. Uh, look at over here Puerto Rico really kicking up around the Puerto Rico Trench another area that uh, kind of been on my watch list here for a while. This area very capable of producing a large earthquake. Uh, it's been quite a while since we've seen anything significant here. But uh, over the last 24 hours, getting a swarm of movement up and down the area of the Puerto Rico and the British Virgin Islands area. U.S. Virgin Islands as well. Uh, nothing significant at the moment, but take note when there's a swarm, right? Definitely got to pay attention to that type of activity. Uh, Oklahoma activity kicking up uh, in the gas fields. This earthquake was felt all over northern Oklahoma and southern Kansas, right around Medford, Oklahoma. Uh, 4.5 earthquake. I think originally came in as a 4.6. Uh, I believe it got downgraded there uh, where, to where it's at now, 4.5. Struck at about 7.8 kilometers below surface, right smack dab out there in the Wakita Trend gas field. Um, so yeah, no doubt uh, we don't need to look at the satellite imagery because we all know what's out there when it comes to the pumping operations and the waste well injections. The, uh, the uh, earthquake activity is 100% proof of the uh, man-made earthquakes out there. I want to read an article up here. I shared it on my Facebook page, but I want to see if I can find it here real quick. And... Uh, go over this um, the OCC which is uh, let me bring this up here the OCC the Oklahoma Corporation Commission's induced seismicity department directed three Arbuckle oil and gas water uh, ga gas wastewater disposal wells to shut down and restrict production at other wells following Monday morning's 4.5 earthquake um, so it looks like these guys are starting to jump on the bandwagon about shutting these oil uh, oil operations down. Uh, there's no doubt that this earthquake activity is the subsequent action of the, uh, the, um, the man-made oil and wastewater injection operations that goes on throughout Oklahoma, Kansas, Texas area. You know, we get it, right? At gas and oil fracking operations, but... We can expect these earthquakes to continue long after operations ceased. So it's uh, it's about time they get on the ball and shut these folks down, I believe, because these earthquakes will possibly get bigger. Uh, and then you can run into some damages once we get up above the 4.5 uh, threshold. Uh, satellite imagery out here shows the, uh, the multitudes here. We don't need to go in here to these uh, to these little squares and little boxes here. That uh, or pumping operations scattered out and about in the land, uh, you know we see that, and it's written all over the map here. Wakita Trend gas field, and these are all over the place in Oklahoma and Kansas and Texas. So, uh, just a just a friendly reminder when we feel these earthquakes, 
that's who to blame uh, when it comes to the uh, uh, earthquake activity out here. There is some man, there is some uh, fault systems, no doubt, that run through Oklahoma. You got the uh, Wichita Mountains here, a little fault system here, and uh, other areas around the Mc, uh, McAllister and these mountain ranges here. But up here, North Ended, around the Kansas border, there's no fault systems that run specifically within this area. Um, there's a hazard map from the fault systems within the region, uh, but these are purely, uh, no doubt, um, fracking and uh, pumping operations, wastewater injection wells, and um, just read an article, uh, posted it there on my Facebook page on the Earthmaster, uh, that the uh, OCC is shutting some of these folks down, and uh, you know, it might be time because uh, you know, these earthquakes and start damaging people's properties out there in the Oklahoma area. So. That was felt uh, over, like I said, a wide area of Kansas and Oklahoma area. Some further movement down here in the Odessa, Texas area, outside of Midland, 2.7. Uh, let's see if we're looking at the all magnitudes. Bring that up here. Doesn't make a difference. But uh, some activity definitely kicking up here. Uh, the, region, the reason why these things collapse and produce uh, earthquakes and whatnot is because the continent as a whole... Um, not just regionally. I'm not talking about around Stillwater in an area. You know, I'm talking about as a whole. It's always underneath pressure out here from the many different plates surrounding it and crunching it and whatnot, uh, and what's going on below. So uh, pressure is always, almost like always occurring out here uh, in the area of the uh, even a ways away from the plate boundaries out here in Oklahoma. So sometimes we get these uh, intense areas of earthquakes and they're. Um, pretty much right smack dab at uh, gas and oil rig operations uh, scattered throughout the area. Here's a uh, 1.8 just coming into the uh, uh, Hennessy, Oklahoma area. Uh, well, you know what? Just for fun, let's go ahead and take a little gander out here and take a look at uh, what's underneath this uh, 1.8 here. Every time I fly over Oklahoma and Texas uh, from 30,000 feet, uh, it's a beautiful sight. I love the countryside out there. But you can see these little boxes here let me let me zoom in for a little bit so you guys can see them those are not beautiful oklahoma uh, friendly townhouses out there those are all oil operations pumping operations injection wells all over the place and 1.8 just coming in here uh, within the vicinity of this gas field uh, that's uh, just south of the uh, 4.5 this morning so you can expect further earthquakes to continue out there in the oklahoma area and possibly getting bigger at that uh, for the extended future because the damage is already done. Uh, West Coast region, kind of calming down. There's not a whole lot going on out here along the northwest or the uh, western part of the country. Um, as far as Northern California goes, uh, activity in the south part of the state and eastern Sierra Nevada, yes, things kicking up around Reno southward into the Ridgecrest area. Long Valley Super Volcano, a little bit of activity, folks. Nothing significant. And uh, some more fractured, uh, some earthquake activity along the fracture zone here of the Tonopah, Nevada area. Um, down south, not a whole lot kicking up. We are seeing some movement uh, around the San Jacinto Fault area southward. And also over here off the Elsinore Fault system, a little microquake. And uh, some movement south of the border there with a 2.5. But overall, uh, not a uh, no major swarmings going on. I can't say it's absolutely quiet because that's not the case. Uh, someone mentioned about uh, the earthquake activity out here in the New Madrid zone. We kind of looked at the map here of the 30 days and kind of mentioned here that um, there's not a whole lot going on, right? 30 days of earthquakes, 17 earthquakes compared to months past. We've seen this number in the 40s and 50s. So when I say there's not a whole lot going on compared to previous months, uh, I'm meaning that the magnitudes the multitudes here of earthquakes in the New Madrid zone uh, compared to previous months are not as active. So I uh, just kind of clarifying up that uh, statement from earlier. Somebody just kind of questioned that. 15 earthquakes, not that big of a deal around the New Madrid zone in 30 days. I've seen this number up a lot higher than the 15 earthquakes. Uh, let's go back to the all magnitudes map here. Eastern part of the country, not a whole lot going on. I don't see any earthquakes out there at all. Intermountain West region shown some movement, including a pretty large query blast, a 3.2 earthquake uh, that was caused by query blast there outside of, uh, uh, what is that, Vernal? Buckskin Hills? 
Doing a little bit of blasting out there with some dynamite. Uh, 3.2, that's pretty pretty good size uh, little shaker out there. Uh, movement down through the Cedar, Utah area. And Cedar City getting in on a little bit of activity. Uh, let's check out uh, Pacific Northwest. Of course, not a whole lot going on right now in the Oregon area. There's a little article that got put out about the Three Sisters. Volcanic... Uh, trio out there in the cascades nothing's really changed on the status of the volcanoes but they have measured i'm just gonna do a little quick recap here of the um of the activity here everything still stands as green and normal nothing uh, significant has changed but they have noticed an uptick in the uplift uh just to the southwest of the south sister volcano that's listed there on the map. Um, of course, things like this, they come and go. But uh, uh, over the last few months and so, over the last year as well, seen a pretty uh, pretty increase, pretty good increase in uplift. This here kind of shows the uh, satellite or the uh, line of sight ground motion. Of course, the higher the, or the warmer the color here, the higher the uplift in inches. Now, we're only only talking about maybe an inch or so in uplift over the last year but uh, if you think about it that's kind of at a volcano southwest of volcano that's some uh, some pretty good ground movement underneath there some magma intrusion and it's not over just a little bitty hundred square foot area it's over a pretty broad um, region of the uh, volcano here 3.1 miles on the scale here and that's kind of what it looks like right about here five kilometers or so so we got 3.1 miles of a uh, one inch of lift and whatnot. That's uh, some pretty good magma kicking up there in the area of the, uh, the South Sister volcano. Uh, I want to read, um, let me see here, is this it? Yeah, here's the other chart uh, from the USGS. You can see a, we see a sudden increase in uplift here towards the end of uh, 2021, getting into 2022, a major sharp uptick in vertical motion gps vertical motion here in centimeters uh, here's the inch frame but uh you can see it's been on a steady uptrend if you will since about 2002 or so prior to that as well but uh, just noticing that little sharp uptick in vertical uh, displacement there so things are definitely uh kind of looking kind of crazy when it comes to the uh, volcanic activity in the cascades uh, the uplift is centered in a region where chloride values in streams and springs are unusually high. Uh, chloride concentrations can reflect the presence of magma in the subsurface as the magma slowly cools and emits gases and fluids. Uh, the chloride concentrations can increase in springs and streams above the magma body. The anomalous chloride values indicate that the uplift that started in the mid-1990s and is not caused by a brand new magma body, but instead probably... Uh, reflects an episode of magma or magmatic fluid accumulation in a long-lived magma uh, reservoir complex. So uh, let's just say it's kind of filling up right now, right? We're getting a little bit of a magma intrusion, if you will. Uh, so going to watch this pretty closely. Um, let's see here. Suggests that minor pulses of magma or fluid accumulation were occurring. Uh, do 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 do. By 2020, the maximum amount of uplift, uplift measured by satellite radar data at the center of the uplift west of South Sister since 1995 was approximately 12 inches. Uh, at continuous GPS site uh, US HUSB, a few kilometers west of the maximum uplift, so 6 inches. So that's a lot of accumulated stress there over since about 1995. Uh, 12 inches of uplift. Uh, and just an inch within the last, uh, since 2021. So things kind of looking crazy right there. Nothing, there's no, anim you know, there's no uh, for sure sign that this thing will blow. But uh, no doubt in the future, it definitely will, I believe, strongly. Uh, let's see here. I wanted to pull up a map. I had a couple maps here pulled up of the, uh, of the area. Let me show you guys the overview here. Uh, they mentioned Three Sisters is a potentially active volcanic center 
It lies close to rapidly growing communities and resort, resort areas in central Oregon. Uh, no doubt, uh, beautiful area up there around Bend. I've been up there several times. I may go out there this weekend and check out the Three Sisters area. I know the roads are closed up there, but uh, we'll figure it out uh, as far as getting into the park. Uh, let's see here. Here's the overview. Uh, it's a map, hazard map, it's pretty simplified, showing potential impact area for ground-based hazards during a volcanic event here at Three Sisters. Uh, got lava, regional lava flows stretching all the way over here to Bend. Okay, see that? See the uh, color of the map here? Uh, pretty highly populated region. Beautiful area. Got that butte right in the center of town. I've hiked that thing a couple times. Beautiful area. But uh, it's in a major uh, zone for regional lava flows if this thing decides to uh, uh, do its thing. Uh, and, uh, of course, near volcano right it's gonna have different types of uh flows and and uh ejecta and rock fall and mudslides and whatnot but uh it's a pretty scary map if you look at it this whole area here is under threat for uh for um volcanic hazards if this thing decides to do a full major eruption uh but yeah i did a previous video on it uh, if you want more information on it go ahead and check it out uh, on the website or on my uh, uh, youtube channel all volcanoes right now in the sierra and cascades are at uh, green nothing uh, significant going on no elevated activity uh, to report but we will be keeping a very close eye on the uh, three sisters area for the uh, in the updates that uh, come out nightly. I want to check out the trimmer map here along the Cascadia. A little bit of increase here in the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, 140 epicenters, kind of a good increase right there. I haven't seen that number in a little while. While that's not a major amount, uh, it is kind of confined there to the southern end once again of the Cascadia and into Northern California. We have not seen any further activity along the coastline. In fact, things look pretty quiet here. When it comes to earthquake activity here at the uh, the Northern California region, which is kind of odd, but uh, it is what it is. Pretty quiet for now. So uh, we'll watch the trimmer activity pretty closely. Uh, volcanic seismicity. Check out the Three Sisters area. There's all sorts of monitoring maps for this, folks, including uh, I'm gonna I'll probably leave a couple here for you guys to check out. Uh, this here is a GPS uh, network map, and we can zoom in real quick. I'll show you guys here on the um on the gps map here real quick zoom up here go around the three sisters area kind of seen this earlier kick up got south sister right up here the zone to the southwest of the volcano is where we're getting that uplift and that 12 inches of reported uplift since about 1995. Uh, one gps station here shows a pretty crazy remarkable um, major uplift right here at the end of last year. You can see it kind of comes and goes in waves and whatnot. This is the vertical displacement up north and east movement. But the vertical one is kind of what we're looking at. Look at these waves, right? Look right here towards the uh, end of last year. A major spike up and over. And uh, it's not a uh, major one, but it looks like at least, uh, what do we got, 10 meters or so? Or not meters, yeah, uh, 10 mm, uh, like an inch or so of uplift uh, being reported right there towards the end of uh, 2021. It's just pretty sharp. We haven't seen that in the years past, but uh, definitely a pretty rapid rise there. Anyway, this uh, site is pretty cool, not only monitoring a volcanic activity, but uh, activity along the Cascadia for uplift and whatnot. Uh, when it comes to the uh, uh, subduction of the Cascadia zone, you can look at uh, all sorts of trends in the data. Of course, the continual rise of the Cascadia along the coast there, right? You get that subduction pushing up the land, and uh, that's kind of what it's been doing for quite a while, right? Probably since about 1700. But uh, anyway, folks, we'll move on here um, to the uh, Three Sisters map. Not a whole lot of volcanic activity uh, or, or uh, earthquake activity taking place here around the Three Sisters. Uh, you can check out uh, local seismograph stations as well within the vicinity of this volcano called the Wife. 
Uh, let's see if we got anything. This kind of looks a little uh, overdone. Let's see what the previous day looks like here. Maybe, 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 maybe we're circling. We are circling. We're thinking. That's kind of odd. Okay, this thing's way overblown, folks, uh, with the data. Can't even see if there's anything going on there. I'm not for sure why, but not going to spend a whole bunch of time looking at that. But we will continue to monitor earthquake activity and volcanic uh, uh, movement if if uh, it does take place up there in that region. But uh, I'm thinking about going up there this weekend, seeing what's going on. Maybe talk to a few folks in the uh, area. What else we got? Uh, any notable earthquakes up here? A little bit of movement along the Aleutian Trench. Uh, continued quiet spell along the area around Japan northward, although a little bit of activity off the coast here in the recent days and within the last hour. Deep earthquake here southwest of Tokyo into the um, into the trench region here. It looks like 103.3 kilometers for 4.4 and some other deep movement up here to the north around the Japan Trench, 46 kilometers for a 4.3. Still watching this area for potential large-scale movement. Uh, pretty quiet throughout the Philippines. Indonesia area seen some movement. We're still looking at swarming activity down here in the Kermadec Trench and also some renewed earthquake movement around the volcanoes there at Tonga. Uh, of course, you've got the Hunga Tonga volcano right here with a couple fours kicking up just nearby. This comes as, uh, well, we can go here to the 30 days and you can see the swarm of activity that has kicked up around the volcanoes over the last 30 days. Pretty significant swarm of movement stirring things up here in the region. I'm sure uh, I'm sure the volcanic activity may pick up here pretty soon with all this recent movement. Uh, but also watching down here for some uh, further development along the Kermadec Trench. It's been uh, pretty active there with that swarming. Um, what do we got here? Puerto Rico, South America just covered that. There's the uh, 4.7 that just came in. The Yellowstone map, we'll check this out here real quick. Didn't want to make a super long video, but it's turning out to be that way. And so far, my voice is holding up, wouldn't you know. Uh, pretty quiet throughout the Yellowstone area. No movement, uh, no magma intrusion. Doesn't look like, uh, looks like uh, pretty quiet. I don't see any type of activity except for wind events on some of these seismograph stations and some technical errors on the readings of those two uh, specific stations. Let's check out the solar weather real quick here in the sun or on the sun. Still looking at heightened activity from this major sunspot up here, which is still facing the Earth, 2936. And some further activity ramping up uh, just to the left of it here on the screen that will be rotating into view and possibly providing some further threats of solar flares in the coming days. But 2936 is the one to watch. Uh, just due to the dynamic activity that it's uh, that it's showing, 90% uh, chance of a C flare, 40% chance of an M flare, and the ultimate, uh, or at least uh, the higher class, the X flare, at 10% chance. Of last, uh, somewhat larger uh, flare was M1.1 that occurred a couple days ago. Now we've been hovering at the C flare threat, crackling with C flares into the C flare threshold. Uh, but that thing uh, could pop up here pretty soon, folks, since it's directly uh, pointing right at us. Uh, Three-day geomagnetic forecast calls for enhanced storming with a G2 storm occurring on February 2nd. 85% uh, chance of a sea of a of a of, a, uh, of uh, seeing the auroras. I'll go ahead and spit it out. It's been a long day. North wind's been kicking up out here in California, and it brings with it a lot of dry, staticky air, and uh, it's definitely been getting giving me a headache. I'm getting headaches for the past couple days, actually, and not for sure why. 40% uh, chance for the auroras at the mid latitudes, and then a G1 storm continuing on to February 3rd. So we'll watch that pretty closely as that CME heads in our direction and produces that uh, ongoing threat. All right, folks, uh, we will uh, chat at you guys a little bit later. Stay safe out there, and uh, you know, just be prepared. A lot of stuff going on here in the world. And uh, just got to be uh, prepared. That's the best thing to do. Not be scared, but be prepared, I guess, is the phase, phrase of the day or the night in this case. And uh, look at that 3.8 over here. That's weird. USGS has been kind of showing uh, some threes on the globe recently. 
3.8. Uh, normally they just throw show the uh, 4.0 threshold, but 3.8 kicking up in that area of the world. Anyway, folks, uh, have a good night. Stay safe out there. We will chat you guys a little bit later. Like I said, if you didn't catch the update on uh, the uh, Three Sisters Volcano, I did a previous update with a little bit more in-depth, detailed look at it and the information that was provided by the USGS Volcanic Service. And uh, go check it out if you haven't already. All right, guys, have a good night. Stay safe.